All right. Hello, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to Backyard Musings, broadcasting live from Apple Valley. I'm Steve. I'm Scott. Thank you so much for joining us today. Researchers have discovered an underground aquifer in Oregon's Cascade Range is significantly larger than previously thought. Who knew that something good could come from Oregon? I didn't, I didn't know that, other than Sasquatch. Three times the size of Lake Mead, Oregon's Cascade Range Mountains may not contain gold, but they are home to another precious resource in abundance of water. Sasquatch knew about this the whole time. The research from the team reported the findings in a paper published January 13th in the journal Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. Would you like to know more? Yeah, so if you're not familiar with what, where Lake Mead is, it's um, it starts at the Hoover Dam, right? Mm -hmm. uh, just kind of south. It's been shrinking down lately. Is that south? Kind of southeast of Las Vegas, right? Yep. And it's, uh, yeah, up until this last couple of years, it was shrinking. I mean, really bad. They found skeletons in there. They found yeah, weird people things in there. Barrel, yeah, Probably people found my barrels. glasses yeah, that just, popped off when I was jet skiing over there. Boats, you know, that had been um, sunk. But now it's kind of on a rebound. But it's it's a huge waterway. Um, that and Lake Powell are all on the Colorado River, right? That's one, a couple of the, the uh, storage areas for the Colorado River, so... Researchers from the University of Oregon, uh, along with their collaborators, have mapped the vast underground water reserves beneath the volcanic rocks at the crest of the central Oregon Cascades. Uh, they discovered an aquifer uh, far larger than previously thought, holding at least 81 cubic, uh, cubic kilometers, which is 21 trillion gallons. That's a lot. That's a lot. That's, That's a, lot. a lot, of, lot of water. Um, to put that in perspective, this underground reservoir contains nearly three times the maximum capacity of Lake Mead that uh, it was depleted. It's kind of on a rebound, but it depleted reservoir in the uh, Colorado River that supplies water to California, Arizona, and Nevada. Mm -hmm. It also holds more than half the volume of Lake Tahoe, which is a huge like, lake. Yeah, it's a huge not, lake. Not huge. Deep. Uh, it's very deep. Yeah, yeah very deep lake. Uh, this discovery. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm I wonder what's in. down at the bottom of Lake Tahoe. What do you think? Uh, you know, they've sent those uh, aliens or something. No, they've sent those uh, underwater um, Atlantis underwater submarines down there. Those probes, little, yeah. yeah, the probes and stuff. Um, and you can read up on that. There's articles about that. So, but yeah, it is a super, super deep lake. This discovery carries significant implications for water management and policy in the region. There's a lot of fights over water management between yeah. among the states. Yeah. Where the effects of climate change, oh my gosh. <sighs> well, you think about all the water that comes down the Colorado River. That's a ton of water. It's a huge river. It starts in the mountains of Colorado. And all that water, of course, I don't know if they really have that much better water um, uh, storage than we do. I mean, we have terrible um, water storage, as just came came up in this came last, light, yeah. that the Palisades fire and the word, fire word up. where these reservoirs were just either very low or, or dwindled down to nothing. And that, um, that's sad, but anyway. Okay. So discovery carries significant implications for water management policy in the region, effects of climate change, yeah. dwindling snowpack, prolonged droughts and increasing pressure on water supplies make sustainable resource planning more critical than ever. It also shapes our understanding of volcanic hazards in the area. Magma interacting with lots of water often leads to explosive eruptions that blast ash and gas into the air rather than eruptions with slower moving lava flows. Yeah, like, uh, like in Hawaii. Or or um, Yellowstone, right? Oh, yeah. yeah Yellowstone National Park. Definitely. Uh, quote, it is a continental size lake stored in the rocks at the top of the mountains like a big water tower, said Leif Karlstrom. Way to put it. Yeah. A UO earth scientist who led the study alongside collaborators from the university, uh, 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 holy cow, Oregon State University, Fort Lewis College, which I'm not sure where that is, mm -hmm. uh, Duke University, the University of Wisconsin, uh, the U.S. Forest Service, and U.S. Geological Survey. I can't believe that the ducks worked with the beavers. I mean, they're like uh, <laughs> rivals, you know? Yeah. Well, maybe not so much in the science lab than they are on like the football field, the basketball court or something. So, uh, that there are similar large volcanic aquifers north of the Columbia Gorge and near Mount Shasta, 
likely make the Cascade Range the largest aquifer of its kind in the world. So we got That's the fantastic. Great Lakes and we got the aquifer. Yep. And have you ever seen old Columbia River? No. Oh my no. gosh, it's huge. Yeah. Like yeah, how, how I mean wide? they well they they run full size wide. cargo ships up that thing. Oh dear. Oh yeah, it's huge. Oh it's dear. It's really pretty. Huh. Most most Oregonians rely on water that originates from the Cascades. For example, the Mackenzie River, which supplies most of Eugene's drinking water, that's the ducks, begins high in the mountains at the spring fed Clear Lake. But the discovery of this underground aquifer size was a surprise. Quote we initially set out to better understand how the Cascade landscape has evolved over time and how the water moves through it, said study co-author Gordon Grant, a geologist with the Forest Service. But in conducting this basic research, we discovered important things that people care about. <laughs> oh, that's a caveat right there. The incredible volume of water in active storage in the Cascades and also how the improvement of the water, how, sorry, how the movement of the water and the hazards posed by volcanoes are linked together. Okay. The Western Cascades are characterized by steep slopes and deep valleys carved out by the rivers. The High Cascades, uh, meanwhile, are flatter, dotted with lakes and volcanic topography, such as lava flows. The Cascade Range has been built up by volcanic activity over millions of years, making the exposed rocks and the High Cascades much younger than those in the Western Cascades. As a result, the transi transition zone between the Western Cascades and the High Cascades around, uh, what is that, San Timi? Santiam. Santiam Pass is a natural laboratory for understanding how volcanoes, volcano, volcanoes have shaped Oregon's landscape. Interesting, very Similar interesting. Similar to like the um, Eastern Sierra, right? So the Eastern Sierra is like rugged granite slopes, um, Flat tundra, flat, yeah, a lot of uh, down lot, in the valley, yeah, not not a whole lot of uh, timber. Right, I mean there are certain areas, but but then you go to the, the western cone, slope, the bristlecone pine thing is out there. Yeah. yeah, that's on the whites. Yeah, but on the, and then when you go on the western slope of the Sierra, it's uh, lush timber, green, yeah, Sasquatch super, is out there, super green, and yeah, yeah it's so it's kind of like the the tropical side on one. And the hot, dry, arid side on the other, like you see in Hawaii, Kona versus Hilo. Yeah. I'm not saying that Alpine County is tropical and lush. Yeah. Well, even it's our green. local San Bernardino and San Gabriel Mountains, same thing, right? Although oh, there's yeah. the desert, L.A. Yeah. is primarily a desert you know, area that's been made green by imported water and stuff. But but once you get past the, the mountains, we're all high desert and, and low desert, you know, if you go down below the uh, San, um, what is that, San Jacinto, Idlewild area, San, mm -hmm. San Jacinto Mountain stuff. So anyway. To better understand the flow of water through different volcanic zones, the team took advantage of projects begun in the 80s and 90s. Past scientists had drilled deep into the ground and measured temperatures at different depths as part of the search for geothermal energy resources associated with the many hot springs that pepper the Cascades landscape. Normally, rocks get hotter as you go deeper into the earth, hmm. but water percolating downward disrupts the temperature gradient, making rocks a kilometer deep the same temperature as rocks at the surface. Hmm. Interesting. By analyzing where the temperature starts to pick up again in these deep drill holes, Karlstrom and his colleagues could infer how deeply groundwater was infiltrating through cracks in the volcanic rocks that allowed them to map the volume of the aquifer. Hmm. Previous estimates of water availability in the Cascades took the springs at face value, measuring river and stream discharge. Instead, Karlstrom and his colleagues went deeper, literally. But since those holes uh, weren't originally drilled with the intent of mapping groundwater, they don't cover every area where one might like to collect such data. Mm -hmm. So the new estimate of the size of the aquifer is a lower bound and and the actual volume might be even bigger still. Wow. This would be cool, right? Wow, yeah. yeah. But will they let us tap into that? No, <laughs> no, those tree huggers. No, we can't. We cannot disturb Earth's water. Yeah, yeah. We'll 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 die of thirst. It belongs that, to that Sasquatch. Water will just be bubbling up under there. So that's just sad. While it's encouraging news that the aquifer is so much larger than previous believed, Karlstrom cautions that it's still a limited resource that must be carefully stewarded and needs further study. Quote, 
It is a big active groundwater reservoir up there right now, but its longevity and resilience to changes is set by the availability of recharging waters, he said. The aquifer is largely replenished by snow and snowpack and high cascades. It is expected to rapidly decrease in the coming decades, of course, because of climate change, right? Yeah. It's called, uh, what we reported on this, it's, it's called the natural um, ice age coming to an end, right? Okay. More precipitation is expected to fall as rain, which may impact the amount of recharge feeding the high cascade aquifer. And while it's likely resilient to small, small year-to-year -year fluctuations, many years in a row of low rainfall or snowpack would probably be a different story. Okay, Oregon, so, on the map. Yeah, so y'all need to figure out a way to tap into that water. I mean, that's that's a big deal. Water, water is a uh, resource. very, very important resource that we have. Water is life, man. Can't live three three days without it. The fourth day, you'll be dead. Yeah, it's uh, we got to get past this, like you the the term you use, this tree hugging mentality, and, and figure out a way to do this. I'm not trying to say you need to disrupt the environment, but they've come a long way. You can drill and not disrupt the environment, right? Word. So, yeah, get on it. All right, folks, thanks for joining us. We'll have some more interesting segments later on. Take care, everyone. Thanks for being part of our show.